Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss about counting sort. So counting sort is a sorting algorithm that is based on the keys between specific ranges. So if we know that the input array that we are trying to sort is between a certain range, so we know the minimum value and the maximum value, then in those cases counting sort is useful. So it performs sorting by counting objects having distinct key values like hashing. So we should know the range of the elements and then based on some arithmetic operations counting sort sorts the input array. So if we are given this input array the first step is we need to find what is the maximum value that can be there in this array. So in this case the maximum value is 10. So we know the upper value is 10. So when the maximum value in the array is close to the number of elements in the array, then in those cases counting sort is useful. So it is not a comparison based algorithm. Bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort. So those were comparison based algorithms. But counting sort is not a comparison based algorithm. It performs sorting by counting the objects which have distinct values then does some arithmetic operations on them to sort the array. Now let's have a look at the pseudo code for counting sort. So the first step like I mentioned we need to find the maximum element of the array. So the maximum element in this case is 10. So this max C variable, this will contain the value 10. Then we need to create an output array, which will have the number of elements which were in the input array. So the input array size is 9. So the output array will be of size 9. And then we create a count array, which will have the number of elements max C plus 1. So max C is 10 here. So we need to create a count array with 11 elements. So this is our input array. This is our output array. And this is our count array. So the count array will contain 11 elements and all will be initialized with 0. So this is the first step of the algorithm that we need to create two arrays output array and a count array. In the next step, we count the frequencies of elements in the input array and place them in the count array. So first we have 3. So we'll put count 3 as 1. Then we have 10. So we'll put count 10 as 1. Then we have 6. So we'll put count 6 as 1. Then we have 7. We'll put count 7 as 1. Then we have 8. We'll put count 8 as 1. Then we have 2, we'll put count 2 as 1. Then we have 1, we'll put count 1 as 1. We have 4, we'll put count 4 as 1. And then we have 6. So we need to increment this 1. So we'll count 6 will be 1 plus 1 which is 2. So we have counted all the elements in the input array and placed them in the count array. In the next step, we need to pass this count array and do the cumulative sum. So this is basically the cumulative count. So how do we do the cumulative count? We add all the previous elements. So this will be 0. This will be 0 plus 1. So this will remain 1. So this will be 1 plus 1 which is 2. At 3 will we have 1 plus 2 which is 3. At 4 we'll have 1 plus 3 which is 4. At 5 we'll have 0 plus 4. So it will be 4. At 6 we'll have 2 plus 4 which is 6. At 7 we'll have 1 plus 6 which is 7. At 8 we'll have 1 plus 7 which is 8. At, at 9 we'll have 0 plus 8 which is 8. At 10 we'll have 1 plus 8 which is 9. So let's write down all these values in the count array. So this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 4, 4. So this is our count array after this cumulative count step. In the next step, we'll place the values from the input array 
to the output array using the cumulative sum that we have created. So we'll start from the end. So currently i is 8. So array of i is 6. So we'll do output of count array of i, which means count of 6, which is 6. So we're doing output of 5 is equal to 6. So output of 5 will have value 6. And then we decrement the value in the count array. So this 6 in the count array, this will be decremented to 5. In the next step, we'll place this 4 in the right position. So count of 4 is 4. So output of 3 will have value 4. And then we'll decrement the value of this 4 in the count array. In the next step, we'll place this 1 in the correct position. So count of 1 is 1 which means output of 0 will have the value 1. So output 0 will have value 1 and will decrement the value of count in the count array. So this one will be decremented to 0. In the next step, we'll place this 2 in the right position. So count of 2 is 2, which means output of 1 will be 2. And then we'll decrement the value in the count array. So, th so this 2 will be decremented to 1. In the next step, we'll place this 8 in the right position. So count of 8 is 8, which means output 7 will have the value 8. And, and then we'll decrement the value in the count array. So this 8 will be decremented to 7. In the next step, we'll place this 7 in the correct position. So count of 7 is 7, which means output of 6 will be set to 7. And then we'll decrement the value in the count array. So this 7 will be decremented to 6. In the next step, we'll set the value of 6 in the output array. So count 6 is 5, which means we'll set output 4 equal to 6. And then we'll decrement the value of 6. So this 5 will be decremented to 4. In the next step, we'll set the value of 10. So count 10 is 9, which means output of 8 will be set to 10. And the count of 10 will be decremented, so it will become 8. In the next step, we'll set the value for 3. So count of 3 is 3, so output of 2 will be set to 3. And then we'll decrement the value in the count array. So after this step is done, we have now the sorted array in the output array. So in the last step, we'll copy all these values from the output array to the input array. So this step is the copy step. Because the output array is now sorted, so we'll copy all the values from the output array to the input array. So the algorithm is quite simple. We just need two arrays. In the first step, we count the frequencies of all the elements and store them in the count array. Then we do a cumulative count. And then we use the cumulative count array and place the values from the input array to the output array. And in the last step, we copy all the values from the output array to the input array. So you, so you can see here that this sorting algorithm does not use any comparison of which values are greater, but it uses this hashing technique by placing the elements in their respective position and then copying them from that position to the output array. Now, once you've understood the algorithm, let's look at the few important properties of counting sort. So the time complexity of counting sort is order of n plus k. So where k is the range of the elements. So the range means largest element minus the smallest element. So when we know the range of the elements and the range is not very huge, then the number of elements in the array, then in those cases, counting sort works very effectively. And it is useful to use counting sort in such scenarios. Second, we have seen that it is not an in-place algorithm because it uses additional space to sort. So it uses the order of k additional space. So if the k is not very large, then it makes sense to use counting sort. Now the counting sort is also a stable algorithm that, that is, it doesn't change the relative order of elements with the equal keys. So in this example, when we had two values, six which were same, 
in that case the relative order is maintained so this algorithm is stable and this algorithm is not an online algorithm because because it needs to know beforehand that what is the maximum element that the array can have so it creates the auxiliary array based on the number of elements that are present so it cannot sort a list as it receives it it needs to know beforehand what is the maximum element that would be present so once you understood the properties of the counting sort let's have a look at the implementation all the source code that i will be showing is available in my github repository link of which is present here and as well as in the description let's have a look at the code so in the main function i've created this input vector which have all the elements then i call this function counting sort in which i pass this vector in this function counting sort i first find out what is the maximum element in this array once i know the maximum element i create a count array with the number of elements as max element plus 1 and i initialize all the elements as 0 then i store count of each of the elements in this count array then i do a cumulative count for all the elements and then i find the index of each element of the original array and place them in the output array so once this step is done the array is sorted but it is currently stored in the output array so in the last step we need to copy all the elements from this output array to the original array so this for loop does the copy operation and after this step the array is sorted and in the main function i print the values of the array let's see the output of this program so the input array was given and the counting sort sorts it and gives us the sorted output so that was all for this video if you have any doubts or suggestions please leave in the comment section below if you like my content please do like share and subscribe to my channel it really motivates me to make more such content and until next time this is sandeep thapar signing off